Yeah. How, about, how about this? Jason Bottrell doing us another favor as we yeah, advance towards no shortage the, of as conversation we, around here as we advance to the midpoint of july we've got another acquisition to an already overflowing defense corps yeah and and you say overflowing and i, I feel like that's the vibe right now too yeah. and i i'm i'm looking at the roster and the lineup just on defense now yeah. and never would have thought that this conversation about too many right-handed defense would be <laughs> Not an issue, not an issue, but just no. like a, a conversation, right? Yeah. I mean, you talk about the left wingers, you talk about the right wingers. <laughs> now you've got a, a, an abundance of, of right-handed shot defensemen. No. I think that spells the obvious, well, I think it spells the obvious for a lot of people, maybe. And that I think a lot of people just, just use obvious and maybe back yeah, and back. <laughs> because I don't know either. <laughs> I, love I don't it. know either. How can we know? What, what does it mean for Risto? I think that's that's the biggest question, but... You know, number one, they made the deal yesterday for Yokoharu, yep. and they traded Nylander. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we saw that coming, but I think the deal makes sense. And I'll, yeah. I'll even go back and say that when they drafted Nylander, and it wasn't a bad pick, and, and Nylander's not a bad hockey player, um, but the Sabres needed a defenseman back then anyway. So I just kind of liked the trade because originally when yeah. that pick was made, Riv and I were doing the draft show, and we're waiting for a defenseman. We're thinking Sergachev, McAvoy, yeah. or Chikrin, and... You know, they draft Nylander, but I think he needed a change. You know, you talk about change of scenery for young young mm -hmm. kids. I think he had a tough start to his career from the get-go when, you know, putting Rochester uh, as an 18-year-old. It's funny uh, we uh, talked about him yesterday, too. Yeah, but what I bristle at is they put him in Rochester. He had control of the situation. It was go home or jump into the pro game. And as someone who I thought would want to get to that next level as quick as possible. I don't think Roch was the wrong place for this kid. I think... Um, Not even in I, hindsight? No, I no. don't. Well, okay, so he would have went back home and, and done what? Because well, he was not going back to junior. Which which I think which I think was, was probably the biggest problem is poo-pooing okay. junior. Okay, but I, I would say that time simply showed that he regardless of whether it was as an 18 year old a 19 year old and maybe again as a 20 year old um i don't think he loved the idea of being in rochester quite frankly no he showed that and i feel like and, he showed and, that. and and when we're continually talking about the importance of strategic alignment and development and proximity which is wonderful for us to have you know, an NHL team so closely located to an AHL team. And not to mention, if you're in the right place and performing up to your level and the opportunities that were in abundance the yes. last three years for yeah, a team that was not playoff bound. I think he got was, plagued I, a little I, bit by injuries too at that point. Timing, I, injuries and timing. I, I agree. I agree. You know. and, and how much does that play a role? I don't know. Yeah. But... I just think it was a big missed opportunity for him. And um, I don't like delaying the process of getting to where this club wants to get to. You trade a first rounder in 2016 for a first rounder in 2017. Both have two years to go on their entry level deals. The only hope is that both are at the, you know, uh, certainly now the hope is that Yokiharu is at or ahead of where Nylander would be as far as contributing to the NHL squad because, quite frankly, this team needs as much ready-to-go help as, as it can get to try to try to get to where it needs to be, which is relevant in the playoff conversation in the Eastern Conference. So um, back to your original point about the number of D, you know, it was hard not to be excited about Will Borgen at the end of last year and when he showed up at development camp. And then when you throw in Yokoharu and Colin Miller into the mix, yep. all of a sudden the fight gets that much greater, but I don't think he'll be deterred in the slightest in Will Borgen. Yeah, no, and, and embracing a different the type fight. of player, right? Yes. Different, different type of player. And yes. I, I think that, uh, you know, these we're talking uh, tomato, tomato, yeah. but also, you know, crucial roles and, and, and uh, valuable in what they do. Yeah. Uh, I have to mention this crucial role. Wednesday's uh, 1030 has always been a crucial role. Jeremy Roenick plays that role, and he will join us in the offseason here today. Also, Matthew Barnaby is going to join us at 11 on Twitter yesterday. <laughs> um, very vocal about this deal, loves this deal for the Sabres. 
commented on Nylander, basically saying that uh, Yokoharu is a can't miss, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, nice to hear uh, from, you know, media and analysts from from the outside right uh another one of our friends i have to mention i i sent uh old chris baker a message and yep. asked a little scouting report yeah he said and he's at saber prospects also he, he said uh not very big but very mobile good gaps good stick pressure just a re uh, responsible five versus five defenseman decent not elite speed but he can play fast gets in on the attack and supports skates the puck with a lot of confidence makes a good clean pass walks the line and gets simple shots through creates rebounds he's not flashy that's that's a great scouting report so he's a lot like will borgen without the huge or the, the larger bite. physical presence in the sense that um being able to do the simple yet and, and simple needs to not be thought of uh, in any way as a negative um because this game more often than not requires the simple play in abundance yeah. before you can get to the great moments wow. so the more of those guys that could complete the first pass the zone exit the zone entry the controlled line the better off your entire group on the ice is going to be so you i need have, a guy I have, that's going to get you a nice fourth or fifth assist i which you were joking about off air yesterday I, I, I and, it, it, and it is a hundred percent true and that's when you get into the analytics of the game is who's a creator who's a driver who's a who's someone that stalls out the offense for the other team who's someone that drives it in a quiet manner at the other end and and you know that's marcus johansson too without this uh, you know the superb offensive statistics he's a guy that does a lot of those little things so again it depends on how who he plays with right. because what are the end results going to be that people gravitate to but at the very least He's a guy that does a lot of the, the the little parts of the game right as far as exiting one end and getting to the other. But I, I, I'm it's hard not to be fascinated right now by a right side that currently consists of Ristolan and Bogosian, Miller, Montour, Yokoharu, Nelson, Borg, and Fitzgerald. And they, obviously half of those guys are not likely NHL, you know, in the conversation. Well, yeah, yeah but, Fitzgerald, Borgen for sure. Bogosian's going to be on the IR. Nelson, I think, is a seven. Yeah. Um, which I think he, he that's his role and he Maybe. knows his role. Yeah. And um, but for, for me, Duffer, if you don't mind, I have 7D here right now that I think could could start the year. I mean, I have Darlene and Montour, McCabe and Risto, Hunwick and Miller and Nelson, Bogosian on the IR. Mm -hmm. And sorry, one more time. What was it? Uh, Darlene, Montour, uh, McCabe, Risto, Hunwick and Miller and Nelson is your seven and Bogosian is your on your IR. And, pi I, and pilots on IR. And also pilot is on IR, right. Yeah. So I don't know. I think a lot of people for f spell this as Risto gone. I don't necessarily read it that way. I think it could be read that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there are other pieces to pick around on your defense core that could lure you the piece that Risto could. But right. I just feel like when you watch the playoffs and these teams, yeah, they all have studs up front. Mm -hmm. But what do they all have? They all have unbelievable defense you say what you want about st louis up front the questions that they had in january 2nd and all that there were never any doubts about their defense they had no solid I mean, defense on any given night petrangelo or pareko were their best which is is what you obviously needed um but again having watched closely petrangelo's entry into the nhl that's a decade ago you can see how long it takes before the opportunity sometimes presents itself to grasp the big stage and, and, the all, and, too. and all that all that being said petrangelo was woeful in the last loss for the blues in the stanley cup final he rebounded at the end and guess what every player especially defensemen are going to go through those tough moments but you're right i mean then there's carl gunnerson cast off right scores one playoff goal it happens to be maybe the biggest goal in blues franchise history because if they don't get it the writing's on the wall that they're in a deep hole and and who knows what happens right so um it it, it honestly pd i i say this all the time the the 
the greatest thing, and you lived it with the 0506 group. But for oh, me, Rivs isn't here, so we're allowed to talk about that. But 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 I, but I'm not going to go there. I'm going. I, I will take it back to the '99 group. The, the the as someone who followed the team so closely, what I always admired at, uh, and and felt good about for the the team the most was the only talking points for the team typically that year were Hashik and Pekka, right? That, that those were the two those were the two yeah. guys dom was dom and pekka was a selkie guy and he yeah. was leading a, a less than offensive minded group yeah but what emerged as the playoffs went on was the ability for that group of six and or seven defensemen to show what they could do and the guys like jitnik and schmelik and patrick and woolly you know along with mckee, McKee and warner, and warner you know, yeah. but that that was the beauty of it and that so that's what all this is about it's finding those guys that play together as pairs but also there's so much more to it all the draft picks that Bottrell and his staff have uh, have used on European defensemen the last couple of years, guys that are a ways off, only add to the mix here and aren't top of mind like the Oscari Laxonens of the world, right? But as you get closer to Seattle's arrival on the scene, expansion draft, who are you going to lose? I realize it's only one person. But you have to build yourself to be able to withstand change. You have to set yourself up for success, but you have to be able to withstand change. And what that also means is if you continue to see a negative or a need up front, you've got to have a position of strength somewhere to make deals which can help you in other areas. This, to me, now, in theory, maybe not today, but at least within the year or two, is could be a great position of strength for Buffalo. And nobody likes thinking about trading some of these guys like someone you just acquired but what if in a couple of years you've got four knockout guys on the right side and you desperately need a second line right winger okay so maybe you got to trade yokeharu or someone like that to get it you're going to feel good though that you actually have the asset to pull off the trade i would agree with that a hundred percent instigators if you don't agree with us no calls today but you can tweet us what do you think about the deal nylander for yokeharu Give us a call. Well, actually, sorry, tweet us. He's at Duffer Sabres. At the Instigators is the show. And I'm at the Instigator 76. Uh, like I mentioned, Jeremy Roenick at 1030. Matthew Barnaby at 11. And we're just going over the Sabres tr- uh, acquire Henry Yokoharu. We're saying that right, aren't we? We are for now. We are for now until we're told differently. For Alex Nylander. Yokoharu was a first-round pick in 2017. Think he makes the squad? I don't have him on our squad right now, and I don't want anyone to be uh, discouraged by that because I don't know that Nylander was necessarily going to be on the squad either. I think that was a, a, a big question mark. Big so, question mark. So, I'm, you know what? I'm not wishing any ill will on this kid, on, on Nylander. I, I mean, I'm not hoping he goes and turns into a 50-goal guy, but I'm going to tell you that I hope it works out for both sides. That's kind of what you want for for uh, a young prospect. I mean, he, he's a good player. You know, you never want to see a kid who's drafted eighth overall not pan out for himself because he, you know what? The the expectation and the pressure that he probably feels in that family alone being the younger brother with his brother being a stud and his dad being who he is, he probably he probably feels like he he has to kind of stake his own claim a little bit for in the Nylander household and mm-hmm. and um, you know I, I'm, I'm sure there there's a, a lot on his mind too about cracking an NHL lineup but again not our worry anymore do you think is Yokoharu here is that for now or is that for later well your board's coming up eh what's my board your dr- your dry erase board uh, Thursday you're bowing out now though I'm fence sitting you're <laughs> fence sitting why are you fence sitting uh, you don't know if you want to put him in, or you no. think there's another deal brewing, or what? Exactly. Like, do we not see what's happening here? Change is a inevitable, yep. if not daily, right now for it's this here. group. It's here. We have four pieces. Miller, Yokoharu, yeah. VC. Yeah. Is there not another one? Yes. yes. There's one more. Who is uh Come on. Johansson. Uh, yeah, Johansson. 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 Yeah. Yeah. They're all starting don't forget to forget your mojo. Jumble together. That's a, it is a bit. Well, we did a buy sell trade, Duffer. I don't know how long ago when the Sabres season ended. How many new faces on the roster? Well, Yokoharu will depend on his performance, but in time, yes. But uh, well, it depends. It depends on, on whether he's spun into it, another it, deal. It depends on the roster. Yeah, I mean, and it depends on the roster. It, but look, McCabe's got arbitration. Scandella on expiring contract. Hunwick on expiring contract. Ristolainen 
Um, much talked about. Zach Bogosian injured, but on expiring. So, um, uh, you know what? There, there are so many dominoes, I think, still to fall here. Um, it's So I'm going to delay, I think, the opportunity to present the... Uh, the whiteboard, the dry yeah, well, erase board. So, so what are you saying, Duffer? Your dry erase board, the first crack has to be right? That's the fun in this. Well, that, We're that, not no, real GMs. No, that's pretty we much We can't how... get fired for submitting our board That's on how Thursday. I operate. It's, it better Fair be enough. right the first time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, see, I like to be wrong the first 10 times so that when I'm right, <laughs> it's get... really gratifying. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, it's like baseball. You only It's 300 and you're a Hall of Famer. It's only 30%. I know. Uh, instigators. Try, I tell that to my kids all the time and... And the, and the moment of failure still stings worse than the reality of life. Like, you try to tell them, honestly, seven out of ten times, if you strike out in baseball, you, can, winning. Still, you can still make the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and not just make the <laughs> Hall of Fame. Make a couple hundred million doing it <laughs> with these contracts nowadays. It, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Roenick, speaking of unbelievable contracts, he has one with the instigators. That's why he'll join us in the summer here at 1030. And I look forward to hearing from him about everything that's gone on. We did um, instigator awards yesterday. Mm -hmm. We should throw some of those at him. You know, I so, would think so. I, you know, like uh, worst signing. Who are you most happy for? Just kind of like, here, happy you got the deal. Well, uh, wait, I mean, we kind of scratched the surface yesterday of uh, remaining RFAs. Uh, I'd be curious to know who he thinks among a rather elite group of RFAs this summer is, you know, the top of that class and how he sees all of those playing out and whether he thinks there will be any player movement involving any of them. And my goodness, there are an awful lot. Like, and it's... It, isn't it funny how, you know, we were having this brief discussion off air, um, how there was so much talk about the RFAs going into this free agent period, which is normally driven strictly by UFAs. And everybody clamoring, and Montreal did get out in front of it with an offer sheet. But how now, when you start seeing teams getting closer to taking shape, you realize that the potential the possible strategy for teams contemplating offer sheets may be to wait just a little